Before we begin reviewing nomenclature, it is important to remind ourselves about the concept of oxidation states. The oxidation state is the hypothetical charge on an atom in a molecular entity. Knowing the oxidation state of each atom is valuable to understanding the stability of the entity and predicting its reactivity. You learned some strategies for assigning oxidation states. There are many different methods. Many of them are reasonable. The next slide presents a robust method. You are free to use any method that works to correctly assign oxidation states. This method determines the oxidation state of elements in an entity. These rules are listed in order of precedence. Once you find a rule that applies, stop, apply it, and then move on to the next atom. The first rule is that the oxidation state of atoms in free or elemental form is zero. Looking at hydrogen, hydrogen has an oxidation state of plus one when combined with non-metals and minus one when combined with metals. Groups one and two on the periodic table have oxidation states of plus one and plus two respectively. These are the charges on these elements. Now we're looking at elements which can have different oxidation states. The first one is oxygen. Oxygen has an oxidation state of minus two unless it is bonded to another oxygen atom or to a fluorine atom. Looking at the halogens, fluorine has an oxidation state of minus one. This is fixed. The other halogens have an oxidation state of minus one unless they are combined with oxygen or a halogen higher on the periodic table. And these are all the rules that we have. For every other element on the periodic table, we must deduce the oxidation state from the elements that it is bonded to. The sum of the oxidation states must equal the charge on the entity. Now let's apply this method to some examples. The first we have is CO2. We don't have a rule for carbon, but we do have one for oxygen. Oxygen is minus two. And since the overall entity is neutral, carbon must be plus four. In hydrogen peroxide, we need to know the structure. And the hydrogen peroxide is H bonded to O, bonded to O, bonded to H. So given this, we have two oxygens that are bonded to each other. We don't have any rules when two oxygens are bonded to each other. However, hydrogen bonded to a non-metal means this is plus one and plus one. In order for the overall charge to be neutral or zero, the oxygens must have a combined charge of minus two, which gives them minus one each. Looking at fluorine, fluorine is in its elemental form which means its oxidation state is zero. Looking at nitrate, in NO3 minus, oxygen is minus two. We don't have a rule for nitrogen, but the overall charge is minus one. So in order for this to work, this must be plus five. BrCl, these are two elements, two halogens. The higher one on the in, 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 the col in the halogen column is the chlorine, so this is assigned a minus one charge, and this is assigned a plus one charge. Over here, H2CO is actually formaldehyde. Looking at the rules that we've got, we have a rule for hydrogen bonded to a non-metal, it is plus one. We have a rule for oxygen, and now oxygen being minus two, the two hydrogens being plus one each, the carbon actually has a formal charge of zero. And in this last example, calcium is a metal. Hydrogen, we have a rule for when it is bonded to a metal, it is minus one. And calcium, because it is group two, has a charge of plus two. This combined together gives it an overall charge of zero, which confirms our 
analysis. It was stated that these rules are applied to individual atoms. They can also be applied to polyatomic entities, provided those entities are conserved through the chemical reaction. In the first reaction, iron 2 carbonate reacts with sodium cyanide. We see that the carbonate and cyanide ions exist in both the reactants and products. That is, they are conserved. Since we know that charge on carbonate and on cyanide, we don't need to worry about the charge on the individual atoms making up carbonate and cyanide. In the second reaction, the carbonate decomposes. So we must assign oxidation states to each atom in carbonate and the decomposition products thereof.